We know that we're a Japanese film analysis channel, but we, and the majority of our audience, are Americans. If we may, for one week, we'd like to diverge from our usual talking points to examine one of the best comedy films we've seen since, well, welcome back Mr. McDonald. Why does the American part have anything to do with this? Last year, you might remember that we covered films for both Halloween and Christmas, but we skipped the big American holiday in between. When we saw today's subject, though, we figured it would fit perfectly into that slot, a heartwarming film that makes us thankful for who we are and what we have in life. And that, at least for us, is the very theme of Key of Life. So no matter where you're from, or where you are, who you are, or what you do, join us for Thanksgiving 2018 as we look at one of the best Japanese comedy films we've seen to date. Like we said, we haven't properly covered a comedy film in months. Truth be told, we've only really covered two comedies up to now, Bakumatsu Tayoden and Welcome Back Mr. McDonald, both of which are some of our favorite episodes in the series thus far. Comedy is an extremely difficult thing to properly nail. Just like horror, comedy is so heavily based on context and expectation that what becomes a favorite film for one person will be absolutely maligned by others. Comedy is also very dependent on cultural norms, folkways, and mores, meaning that it doesn't necessarily translate as easily as something like horror, which can play on more universal fears. That being said, we feel it necessary to promote good comedy whenever we find it. Lucky for anyone with an Amazon Prime account, Key of Life is easily available for streaming right now. One night, surfing through the available Japanese film options on Prime, which, by the way, there are a lot, Hashtag not sponsored, hashtag could be. We came across this film. It had been a while since we'd tried something more comedic, so we figured we'd give Key of Life a shot. And boy, are we glad we did. Full disclosure, we didn't even go into it planning on making a video, but what we found sold us on the idea. I know we keep hyping this up, but before we get into the film proper, let's get the director the same treatment all newcomers get here on Cinemoney Poem. Key of Life was the third fictional comedy film directed by Kenji Uchida. It was preceded by A Stranger of Mine in 2005 and After School in 2008, both of which are unfortunately unavailable here in the States. Not to be confused with the anime producer of the same name, Uchida studied film in San Francisco and released his first film, a drama known as Weekend Blues, in 2001. After this debut, however, Uchida quickly transitioned into comedy, where he has stayed ever since. His first comedy film, A Stranger of Mine, became a critical darling at the Cannes Film Festival, affording Uchida the opportunity to continue working in the genre. Seven years later, in 2012, Uchida struck gold again with Key of Life, which ended up winning a slew of awards, including the Blue Ribbon for Best Director and the Japanese Academy Award for Best Screenplay. Honestly, we believe it deserved these accolades. Enough about Uchida though, if you have a Prime account, go ahead and check out Key of Life. Of course, the film is also available on DVD in America from Film Movement. Otherwise, let's jump into the film and see the mad world of Kenji Uchida within Key of Life. Key of Life follows three different storylines which overlap and weave into one another. The first follows Kanai, a magazine editor whose life is scheduled down to the minute, seemingly months in advance. Kanai's plot thread deals largely with her having decided to get married. Her father's health is failing, and Kanai has more or less never failed at anything she has tried. Thus, in order to try and make her father proud, Kanai has resolved to marry before he passes away. The problem is that, well, Kanai isn't exactly dating anyone right now. Our second story follows Sakurai, a 20-something neat, a term which stands for not in education, employment, or training. Due to Sakurai's acting career never really taking off and his lack of prospects in the romance and employment departments, we join him as he's attempting to commit suicide. Fortunately for Sakurai, his failing streak saves him in this instance, and instead of trying again, Sakurai decides to go to a local bathhouse. Here, we meet our third character and encounter the first fold between two threads. The last main character, Kondo, is a contract killer who happens upon the bathhouse after finishing up with his latest hit. Being a neat freak, Kondo is bothered by the blood on his wrist and visits the bath at the same moment as Sakurai. However, as Kondo enters the main washroom, he by chance slips on a bar of soap and smacks his head on the tile floor. Long story short, Sakurai lifts Kondo's wallet, clothes, and car, assuming his identity in the process. Feeling regret, however, Sakurai goes to see Kondo in the hospital. 
As it turns out, Kondo has amnesia, meaning he's completely forgotten his name, his identity, and his occupation. Caught in the moment, Sakurai doubles down and straight up swaps identities with Kondo. Thus, without meaning to, Sakurai becomes a hitman and Kondo becomes the struggling actor. And stuck right in the middle is Kane, who encounters the men due to visiting her father at the same hospital. Without giving any more away beyond the setup, we can say that what begins as a comedy of errors quickly spirals into a comedic version of Death Note. Um, but doesn't that already exist on Netflix? No, no, I mean intentionally comedic. Every action has some sort of butterfly effect repercussions. And as the story goes on, all three plot threads become wrapped up into a rather complex knot. We won't spoil the story itself going forward, but we can get into some of the potential interpretations of Key of Life here. For starters, Key of Life could be argued to be interested primarily in the comedy of life. Put another way, Uchida uses the film to examine the ridiculousness of life. Of course, the film is an out-and-out -out comedy, so we should expect a certain amount of shenanigans to ensue. However, the caliber of hijinks on display and how true to life some of the situations in which our leads find themselves ring true in an era when the struggle to define ourselves seems more common than ever before. We follow a deadbeat nobody who wants to be a big-name actor so disillusioned with the world that he's willing to seek suicide. What's more, he's so lacking in skills or drive that he can't even succeed in killing himself. On the other hand, we have a young woman who is so focused on perfection within every aspect of her life that, in spite of lacking any serious relationships, she has a date set for her wedding. Both of these situations may be hyperbolic, but the reason their comedic elements hit home is that they are representative of today's world, both in Japan and abroad. The chance encounters between the three main characters also represent the comedy of life. After all, comedy is usually based around an expectancy violation. You expect one thing and get another, meaning you end up laughing. While Key of Life may have a relatively logical progression in terms of plot, the ways in which these characters' lives intersect seem somewhat random, meaning that they produce numerous expectancy violations. Thus, through a well-crafted narrative, Uchida uses the film to examine the comedy of life. Another take on the film is that it deals with Uchida's love for acting and filmmaking. As many viewers will likely know, filmmakers absolutely love making films about filmmaking. Some of the best films in history have had to do with the process or background of film. Naturally, we see this love expressed primarily through the character of Sakurai. He's a failed actor, as we said, but more importantly, he's not necessarily given up the dream of working on the stage or in film. What's more fascinating in terms of the film's meta-narrative, we have Kondo. Post-head trauma, Kondo moves into Sakurai's apartment and takes over his life. This presents us with three layers of acting. First, Kondo is a hitman, meaning he takes on a role that he is being contracted to perform. Second, he takes on Sakurai's life. Even if he doesn't know he's not Sakurai, he's still taking on the other man's life and making it his own, as evidenced by how he rearranges the apartment. Third, Kondo does what Sakurai couldn't manage and actually lands an acting gig. He's cherry-picked as a background extra for a gangster film, given his hardened demeanor. And through this happenstance, Kondo is able to become a successful actor where Sakurai couldn't. Naturally, this extends the comedy aspect of the film into new territory. What we're saying here is that Key of Life is an onion of acting and comedy. Even then, it's not all the film has to offer. Ogres aside, let's finally look into the Thanksgiving connection that we were toting at the beginning of this episode. Given how the film revolves largely around two men swapping places and Kanai hoping to hone her own personality, you can probably see where we're going with this. We won't be giving spoilers, but let's just say that a large part of the emotional climax of the film deals with all three main characters learning to be satisfied with their lot in life. Sakurai and Kondo learn by switching places what really matters to either of them especially as they delve deeper into the persona of one another. Kanai, meanwhile, learns that she might be happier if she gives up her stranglehold on every moment of her life. Thus, all three plot threads show us the spirit of thanksgiving, being thankful for who we are and what we have. It provides us the valuable lesson that, due to how unpredictable life can be, happiness can be attained sometimes from letting go of absolute control. We see this, of course, with Kanai's marriage calendar, but also with Sakurai's aspirations for becoming an actor, and even with Kondo's choice of career as a hitman. Life is absolutely insane at points, and Key of Life fully embraces this. It shows us that if we stop and breathe from time to time, the world will help us balance ourselves. 
Key of Life explains that we are not entirely individual, but rather a part of the greater whole that is the world. By embracing this and allowing ourselves to be at peace with our surroundings, we can live symbiotically with those around us. By extension, the film encourages us to be thankful for those that we have in our lives, and to keep the door open in case of happy accidents like our three heroes crossing paths. It's for that reason that we encourage everyone to grab your friends and family and gather around the TV or computer this holiday season and enjoy the key of life together. While any of these interpretations may be equally valid, we're sure that there's more that could be read into the film. Let us know in the comments below if you have any alternative takes on the key of life. Whatever you do though, you owe it to yourself. If you have access to the film, check it out and let us know your thoughts. And for all of our viewers, no matter where you might be in the world, we hope you have a great day. And we hope to see you around next week, back here on Cinema Nippon.